Welcome back. Now to talk about the Naira, as we earlier advertised, uh, the Nigerian currency has weakened to new lows of between 700 and 710 Naira to the dollar at the parallel market as uh, the U.S. dollar demand pressure from retail and end users persists. Now the Naira closed last week at 630 to the dollar and has stayed within the 620 uh, to the dollar band for weeks before the current low of between 700 and 710 uh, to the dollar. Now, findings, this is on the black market, findings showed that although many black market dealers are asking for between 700 and 710 uh, naira to the dollar, actual transactions have stayed within the 700 naira to the dollar band. Now, the Bureau of the Change of Forex Bureau operators have cited the lack of uh, FX, that's foreign exchange, and the surge in demand for the recent uncontrolled uptrend uh, recorded in the market, the foreign exchange market. In the same vein, some bank users who have uh, FX in their domiciliary account have told uh, us that they have not been able to withdraw their funds from the bank due to tightened liquidity. They have not been able to withdraw their funds from the bank due to tightened liquidity. In the same vein, the exchange rate of the official market has also witnessed a downward trend in recent times depreciating to 430 Naira to the dollar, despite recording an average rate of 416 Naira to the dollar in the previous year. And this is following more tightened liquidity in the investors and exporters window, which is what uh, where the Nigerian uh, uh, authorities perched their exchange uh, dispensation at. Uh, some time ago. Now, to help us unpack this, we're joined by uh, two very, very erudite guests. Uh, Professor Kenny Fay is a development economist and the lead consultant with ECOWAS, and Mr. Dominic Rume Uriri is a certified metaverse expert. He joins us from Delta State, while uh, Professor Kenny Fay joins us from Abuja. Gentlemen, you're welcome to the breakfast. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very well, thank much. You. Thank right. you for having us. Yeah. Prof. Um, let's start with you. Um, what are your thoughts on the uh, macroeconomic policies of the Central Bank of Nigeria? Of course, we've heard from some FX dealers and those who are also customers in this report that um, uh, there have been some demand uh, pressure, rather, on the Naira because of the high and increased demand. Um, we've had policies, you know, for instance, moving uh, the exchange rate dispensation from uh, where it was before to the importers and exporters window that happened either last year or the year before that, um, and at several other other policies by the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, led by Gordon Mayfield. What are your thoughts? Do you think he's gotten it wrong, and that's why we're where we are today? No, not at all. The, the Central Bank is doing the best that it could under the current circumstances. But let me explain that the current pressure this in the last few days are actually coming from United States that have uh, revalued their dollar. The dollar has gone up in value by about 12 and a half percent. And that, you know, just imagine dollar and, and euro are just at parity right now. It used to be 20 percent differential, and also pounds are come. So it's almost every currency that has to dollar or denominated in dollar or all is all, it's all affected. Now, added to that is the very high speculation in our economy. And then you see, when you have speculation in your economy, the speculation is to the extent that they want, they think that the, the Naira is going to be defined, it's going to be defined. So what we have are people who borrow money, get all them every money that they have to purchase dollar. So can you imagine if you, if you expect that by the end of next month, the Naira will drop to about eight, 800 to one dollar. Uh, so they, they will just buy the dollar and hold it. End of next month, they will sell. And they will make 15% to 20% just by doing nothing. So that pressure is there. And thirdly, this is summer. People are, people are frantically looking for money to travel abroad for all kinds of things, for medical treatment, for uh, uh, leisure, for holiday. And then also, uh, children's school fees are coming. People are also looking for dollar early for, for, for settling the school fees of their children abroad. And you know we have them in hundreds of thousands abroad. And then you have the politicians that are looking for dollar to settle, to settle their, their political stuff. And that is, that is we, all, we already know that. That's been playing out in the last six months. 
Then we also have the demand, the spurious demand for dollar to import from China and all other places. And look at the trade balance between Nigeria and China. It's over two trillion. That that is alarming. That people are importing all frivolous items because that is the only way they can make money under current circumstances, in their view. So they bring everything they can, um, and then they pass through inflation, pass through to the consumers, and and you're going to have to find a way of taming this appetite. She even tried by by delisting for one items, but it didn't it didn't um, ban the import of these items. They just said that I haven't got a foreign exchange to give you. But these guys are still active in the market, sourcing money. And there's also dollarization of our economy. If there are some places you will go, you see prices quoted in dollar. And when you ask them, they say, well, this is the only way I can sell it so that I can buy the thing because I'm not sure about the value next, next month, next week. So you have all these cumulative effects. Now, let me put it the other way. There are, you know, Forex is a pricing mechanism. Forex interest rate, monetary policy rate, inflation, they're all prices. And when you come to price, you, you demand and supply for the item plays because you try to find where you resolve demand and supply, where are they likely to meet. In the case of Nigerian dollar and Naira, we don't have any meeting point right now. What it is is that about 80% of our forex tends to come from crude oil sales. And, uh, and CBN has been waiting for this money throughout last year. But what, about $3 billion would have been going from NNPC to CBN every month. They haven't seen it. Not last year and this year, they haven't seen anything. And that's why you saw the JP Morgan clamping down on Nigeria and all of that. So, so what is done is that NNPC is doing a direct crude swap with refiners abroad, sending them the crude and then receiving the PMS in return. And then when they do the arithmetic, they said, oh, wait a minute, that the price of the, the revenue, what the potential revenue from the export of the crude is outweighed, far outweighed by the cost of transportation, refining, and, and bringing it back to Nigeria. So government, we are your exclusive agent, go and find the balance. And they call that balance under recovery. And that balance is now 500 billion naira every month. That is what they are calling subsidy. They are now telling government to go and borrow four to five trillion naira to subsidize the price of the PMS. That is where we are. And now you can now look at the impact of that on debt borrowing, on the debt and debt financing, and then the government you know, removing the possibility for government to spend money on the capital projects and then inflation. So that is the question. Now, so what happens in, in reality is that CBN is acting within the 20% room that it has to get more um, uh, uh, forex um, from um, remittance which is dropped from about 26 billion to 100 million a, a month a week which is about five or something billion a year it dropped for a foreign direct investment is not there it's only about 200 million which used to be about eight to ten billion a foreign portfolio investment is not there but they're all heading back to america where the interest rate is going up and all that so it's very very tough CBN doesn't print dollar. It's very, very tough out there. But let me tell you something. 93% of forex demand and supply is actually, the translation is going on in the official window. 93%. It's only 7% that is going on in the black market. Where all this whole noise and all this palaver is coming from, only 7% of the forex. So that's the story. Hmm, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. One may be, be worried that, that uh, you know, they... The, the the market that that gets the the to get the to hug the headlines and grab the headlines almost every day uh, you know in the newspapers uh, is the parallel market not the official rate uh, one wonders why that is but I'll come over to you Mr Uriri and um, what are your thoughts on on the policies of the the Central Bank of Nigeria monetary policies uh, bearing in mind that uh, I think uh, in September two thousand and twenty one. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria accused um, Aboki FX, a website that collates black market exchange rates of the Nigerian Naira against uh, major international currencies, of carrying out illegal activities, undermining the Nigerian economy, in particular, uh, you know, uh, bringing the Naira under pressure. Well, Aboki FX uh, since just uh, uh, shut down its Naira, um, you know, updates, and uh, the Naira has also gone down with Aboki FX. Well, 
Thank you very much. The, it is sad that we have not yet realized that currency is the lifeblood of every economy and that the power of a strong and stable currency cannot be overemphasized. Because when you look at this particular statement that you just said now, that the, it is because of a website. You can imagine a CBN governor that has a lot of certifications from some UK university. And he's saying it's because of the website that displays um, a Naira to dollar rate that is causing some of this particular nosedive in the value of Naira. Then that is a very, very, very big question to start looking into. Because when you look at things, you look at like in the past few years, Nigeria printed about one trillion Naira, and they were able to use only they shared about 100,000 to people during COVID and then sent some offshore and then took the currency to about 18% in inflation. But that's not what we should even first of all focus on because if you look at some countries like, um, say, South Korea, today the Naira is officially pegged in the bank at 411 to 111 Naira to a dollar. If you look at like South Korea, they have their currency pegged at 1,107. 27 to a dollar. But does that, does that mean that Nigeria having a lower value? Is our economy better than that of South Korea? No. I mean, South Korea has like three times bigger economy than what we have. Today, we have the Naira being pegged at about 710 to a dollar, but that is not the end of it. We can start looking at things that cost this particular inflation in the first place, which number one, we have that particular money printing that I've just said. Then we have some kind of, then we have debt currently that we have. Okay, so Nigeria currently is running like a debt financing structure, not a capital type of financing structure. And how do I mean? Nigeria borrows debt to be able to finance what it needs. It's not generating enough revenue that's able to settle its debt. Like what Prof said, for example, when he was talking about the petroleum industry, on a yearly basis, we saw Nigeria bringing in products of up to $6 billion, because that also coincided with the um, CBN's reports over the last five years that we have actually imported about $36 billion worth of PMS products into this particular country. And you see that we can dangote come to the rescue because this particular $36 billion have this hard currency supply that has gone out. But Dangote refinery is not out yet. So that particular currency, hard currency supply that is going out on a constant basis, being able to service the petroleum um, sector will not yet be solved because we don't still have a way to fix that particular refining problem here. So you see that um, just coming out to say one website actually dropped that particular value is a very, 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 very wrong move in the first place. Then we see careless statement coming from the CBN governor, something like um, what he said a few weeks ago. As if you are yes, yes, yes. Exchange, exchanging your Naira for dollar, they would arrest you. I mean, if you know that if you sell dollar because of Naira, why would you now want to bring out your dollar to sell it so that they will arrest you? I mean, you will start holding your dollar to ensure that what? You don't get caught. And that actually now causes a demand and a supply problem, which Prof actually said earlier. And you see, because of this particular thing, it causes us to have something like an arbitrage. And how do I mean by arbitrage? You see the official, uh, the official dollar rate in the CBN is about 411. You see the black market price coming at about 700. Some people, they have access to gain this particular dollar or get access to the treasury, and they get this particular dollar at that 411. And then they go back to the black market, use ATM or maybe in another country to withdraw it, and they trade it at a higher price, which is actually destroying the structure of the Naira okay. to dollar economy. Then we see something like abuse by the elites, just like um, Prof said. Some people, they want to just hold their money in dollar and start dollarizing their economy while they're in Nigeria. You can see that if they printed about one, one trillion um, Naira for that particular COVID time, where did that particular money go into? Maybe some of them went to buy dollar again, thereby ensuring that the demand for dollar continues to go high. And then not as if we are diversifying the economy so that we now say, okay, we are using other sectors of the economy to be able to produce more things that can be exported. 
And it's not as if foreign direct investment is also coming into Nigeria because from the statistic we, we got, foreign direct investment has actually been on its low in the last six years. We have not had, because of the insecurity problem, because of the epileptic power, nothing is actually coming into this particular system to ensure that we are making that particular local produce that we can be exporting that can increase our supply in okay. terms of FX revenue. Okay. And then you see something like the border closure that happened. You can see that that particular border closure enabled us to start producing rice locally and stopped the way we were spending dollars in terms of exporting rice, which actually now increased some of the internal supply for that particular dollars for us. But we need to ensure that these particular things are sorted out, else we cannot rely on just one CBN right. government telling us that there will okay. be one particular website when there are major internal problems. All, all right, be because of time, my problems. brother, let's quickly, let's quickly, because of time, uh, let's quickly cut it short. Um, and just a quick one from you, Prof. Um, uh, do you think that the current exchange rate um, direction of the central bank, or let's say the monetary policy committee, you know, last at the last meeting moved it from uh, thirteen percent to fourteen percent? Do you think that uh, they are getting it right with these tweaks, the way they're going about it with the um, with the monetary policy rate or the exchange rate? Very shortly, please, uh, sir. No, do do nothing is not an option. The increasing it is in is is, is in, in line with. You know, press international practice right now, and and it's the right thing to do for them. But the but the, but the TBN is focusing on generating more foreign uh, non oil revenue with the RT two hundred billion dollar revenue drive, which over the next three years could you know solve this kind of problem, and people will stop looking for for dollar in the way we are looking for it. So there is a demand side and a supply side action uh, from the from the authority. But it seems unfair that everybody just thinks that CBS should solve every problem in the economy. And, uh, and we are glad that he's doing the best that he could. But there are also fiscal aspects that could also augment. If you raise the, if you use instruments, uh, what they call levy instruments, to increase the effect okay. on those that one items or even extend them, you bring more pressure on those who are important. You okay. pay more tax. Okay. All right. Uh, and, and, and suppress demand. All right, Prof, we, ha we have to go. Interesting. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Dominic Rume uh thank you so much for your time. And of course, Professor Kenny Fair as well. We're grateful to have you, gentlemen, with your analysis and uh, hope you. to have you soon. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. All right. Thank that's, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's the size of our package uh, this morning on The Breakfast. We return tomorrow with more analysis and interesting discussions. Please follow us across social media at Plus TV Africa. Good morning.